All right, guys, so we're going to see what kind of cheap radios we can find today. I haven't seen a lot of deals lately, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of people ask about these radios right here. So, let me turn down the DMR guy. Okay. All right. The 706 Mark IIG. Now, with these radios, there are multiple different ones out there. They have different serial numbers, and some of them you can uh, fix if the finals burn out. Like, uh, the one that I had that I sold, it was a late serial number. So, they changed somewhere in the production the finals that were used in them. So, a late serial number is desirable on these radios. Because they're... Um, they're in a hot environment, basically. They get really, really hot. The um, the original 706 is probably a more reliable radio, but it doesn't have 440, and it doesn't put out the same amount of power on 2 meters. So the Mark II G is like the full meal ticket. You get um, 50 watts on 2 meters, and I think 35 on 440. And But the issue is that the fan in the radio is set differently. And these different types of parts inside of them. And basically, they run a lot hotter than the original 706. So, what does this guy want? It has a desirable high serial number for those concerned about replacing the final transistor availability. Now, you can replace the other ones, you just have to go and cut the circuit board and do a bunch of really crazy stuff. So, it can be done. It's not a drop in replacement, but it can be done. I've seen pictures of it done. Uh, 650. These have never really dropped in price for a while. Um, they were a little bit lower, but um, yeah, anyway. They are, really are a really good radio. And unlike some of the other radios out there, like the, the ASU-857D, these radios don't really seem to have a problem with any of the parts of the display or anything are real easy to read and <clears throat> the menu system isn't too complicated um, so it's a pretty good deal I guess uh, let's see here somebody's selling a 710 whoa that's pretty cheap 675 shipped is there something wrong with it oh it's sold yeah look at that 675 somebody saw that and jumped on it uh, Yeah, that was a good deal. I just don't like the transmitted audio on these things. And they don't do AM for crap, so... Yeah. What we got here? Let's see our plays. Nice pictures. This is like the same screen as the uh, Linko. I haven't seen too many of these, the G106. It's also another one that's sold. What did he want for it? I don't even see his price. $200, wow, that's pretty good. The FTM. We don't want that. 
Kenwood 590 SG. $900. Like, sorry guys, ain't worth it. It's a legacy radio. I mean, it's just boring. Got no waterfall, got no pan adapter. Uh, doesn't do anything special. It's not particularly good at getting rid of interference. It doesn't have impeccable audio. It's just a good workhorse radio. And that's if the ALC overshoot problem has been corrected on these. It's not worth $900. FDDX10 with accessories. What do we got? Uh, stock mic power microphone, added power pole connectors, uh, M70 microphone. I don't know, those are like a hundred bucks. Uh, asking thirteen fifty for everything. That's not a deal. I'll just go buy the damn thing new. I mean, these people are just nuts. You have to be like twenty five percent underneath the new cost. And, I mean, you really do. And then, like the accessories that you include, you need to figure those in the same price as well. Otherwise, you're actually better off to just not even include all that other stuff. If people get fancy, they start adding, well, we got this, I got that, and, and I'm including this. So I'm going to ask new price on the radio. But it doesn't work that way. And that's why he hasn't sold it yet. And we've seen previous listings that are much newer have already sold. So anyway... And it also in the current economy and the way things are, I mean, like, you, you can't be asking prices like this. Alright, anyway, uh, I haven't seen too much of anything really good on here. Let's see if we can find, uh... Uh, okay, um, so I'm trying to see, are they offering any kind of deals? Nope. Okay, so the X6100, though, right now is 490 That's the cheapest it's been. When I ordered mine, it was 545 It came bundled with a speaker, but who cares? Yeah. So this is a really good deal on these ones. Mine's sitting here in front of me. Um, I use it a listen a lot. I haven't had much chance to use it outside because the mosquitoes are so bad this year. Um, and it's still too hot to go out there wearing a coat. Anyway, um, as I've talked about before on the channel it has birdies in certain spark certain spots um, but other than that like it's got a really nice display on it and it sounds really good and I've, I've talked to people like I would normally talk on 100 watt radios with it on my home antenna it's going to be a challenge probably making contacts on it, you know, with the internal battery, but 10 watts with the external battery should help quite a bit. But that that's a really good price on that thing. And you have either that one or the G90. And I, I, I like the G90, and it's pretty easy to make contacts on it with 20 watts. But I don't like the display as much, and I don't like the form factor as much um, for portable. The G90 is kind of goofy because it doesn't have any legs or anything. And, um, you know, it's kind of long. So, the form factor, I think, of the 6100 is a little bit better. But anyway, either one of those would be good for portable. Um, the new G90s have a fan built into them and Anderson power poles. So they shouldn't run hot like the old ones that I have. Um, but the old ones definitely did get warm. So I, I really think that on a budget, these are two of the best radios that you could probably buy brand new, but the 6100 might frustrate some new users. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it's a QRP radio. It's going to be difficult to make contacts. 
it's not really meant to be used as a main home radio. Let's go see what we have on uh, Craigslist. Let's see what we have. I have no idea what the hell this is. I've never seen anything like this before. Oh, uh, stupid swan radios. Cubic Astros. Yeah, these are really weird. I, I don't really like anything made by swan. Or cubic. Or anything made by Herb Johnson. Just because I had an Atlas 350. And I just wasn't real impressed with the quality of how it was made. And I had a Swan 350. I wasn't real impressed with the quality of how it was made. I just think that they made real cheap stuff. Um, and if it works, it works. But if it doesn't work... So I don't know. These are just kind of goofy. Herb Johnson tried to make all kinds of stuff to like sell to the military and stuff like that. But... What I don't like is I don't like PTO tuning. Okay, I don't really care for it. I had a 10 tech that had PTO tuning and I didn't like it. Um, but definitely weird radio. And again, they don't have AM or anything like that. And I just really feel like a quality radio should have every single mode that there is. And should be able to do it well. Which is one of my gripes about the 710. So you could get on the 7300 and get on 3870 AM and fire up the 7300 and run it into an SB220 and talk to the old farts on on uh, the AMI net and they're going to tell you you sound amazing until you tell them what you're on and then all of a sudden they're going to start backpedaling. But anyway, um, Radios like the 710 don't sound good on AM. Here we've got it uh, for sale, my 920. It's not mine, but $500 for one. It's a pretty good deal. Um, this is almost like a top tier radio, you know? Um, mine's right over here. So, $500 for that's pretty good. Um, in San Diego somewhere. You got here some spam guy. I buy and refurb radios from. I always flag these guys. They're just usually scammers. You know, they're trying to get something for nothing and then flip it for high dollar. TS 930 for $250 does not function when powered on it just makes a whining noise well it shouldn't be $250 if it doesn't work I had uh, bought one from Ham Radio Outlet that didn't work for $150 one time it was a very simple problem. Let's see, somebody selling a whole bunch of Yesu crap for a top dollar. A bunch of Drake B lines. You got a TS50 and a 440. Never cared for these radios at all. They seem way too plasticky ergonomic. I definitely like the 440 over the other uh, radio. Um, 350 a piece. I also have a DX70 Alenco for 350 in the box. I would be buying the Alenco guys because I have it. 
He didn't, he didn't show a picture of the Yelenko. It was like, uh, that might be the top of the Yelenko. No. That's, that looks like the back of the Yelenko, but anyway, I can't tell. It doesn't matter. Nobody really ever sells radios for the, uh, <clears throat> I can't say no price anymore. Here's a Kenwood. With some other crap. Let's see what they want for the, the 450 for the radio for 570. Yeah. No, no, no great deals. I, I don't like it when people do this. This is misleading. You make it look like the radio is $99, so you'll click on it and look at it. So I flag them. I just, I just think it's shady, dishonest crap, fake ass, misleading bullshit. Vancouver, Washington. So if this comes with the power supply, it's not worth anything. It doesn't come with one. Forget it. Unless you're a swan collector, that's a waste of money. It's the same one that was on here last time we looked. You're generally going to find they're the same idiots selling the same crap for a long time on here. <clears throat> so now I get it when somebody puts like a price like $9.99. And they want a thousand dollars for the transceiver, which is still available now, the SG model, and it's more than a thousand dollars. So <clears throat> I wouldn't ever buy it, but I mean, it might be a fair price. And at least he put the price for his most expensive thing on there. You know what I mean? Instead of like putting the price of the cheapest thing that he has, and then you scroll through and find out he wants a thousand dollars for the radio. Which is bullshit when people do that. It's like, you guys that post shit like that, you're a bunch of fucking scammers. A bunch of dishonest, shady fuckers. Like, no better than a fucking lawyer or a car salesman. You're dirty, and you should be fucking hung out to dry. We don't need fucking shitty, shady fucking people in the world. But we got enough motherfuckers in other countries calling you up on the phone telling you, Hello, this is Microsoft. I need a gift card to fix your computer. We've had enough of that bullshit. We don't need more scammy ass fuckers. The world is full of evil, despicable people. That is very obvious. Here's a G90 for 350. I would probably pass on that one. I would also pass on the X6100 for more than $40 more plus tax, you could have a brand new one. There's the amplifier. It's about normal of the normal price. Um, here is a 7610. I believe these are going to be going for about 3400 new. I really don't know that I would buy one of these for that much money. It'd be really hard for me to justify that. This is going to be another misleading advertisement right here. It's $100 it says. Well you know that this dipshit is not asking $100 for the radio in the picture. and. Almost every radio in the picture is going to be more than $100 because we, we've seen this guy's ad before. Yeah, all the crap that nobody wants is $100. Here's a 
He wants seven hundred dollars for the radio, which is ridiculous. He wants five fifty for the nine thirty, which is pretty ridiculous. <clears throat> he wants five hundred for an FT one hundred. That's stupid. So, uh, yeah, people like this, we flag them. He's posted this two months ago, and he's probably the kind of idiot. He's got pictures from 2022 on here. You have no idea what you're getting from an idiot like that. When you see people like that, you just really need to, like, if, unless it's something you really want, you need to run. It's not worth it. Okay, so here's a uh, Kenwood 850 with an MC60 in this gigantic power supply. Um that I would not touch with a 10 foot pole because it's an RFI magnet um, not worth a thousand dollars but they think they got gold their dad fucking died and they got daddy's fucking stuff and now they're going to sell it this is also not worth five hundred, four hundred dollars a TS440 version receiver it's like tits on a dog you can't talk on it And we get a gigantic amplifier. Two hundred dollars for some weird ad. TS four forty O five transceiver in Bothell. So for you guys in Washington, Bothell's a nice area. They're usually nice people. People usually with money. Not some ghetto fucker trying to sell you some crap for more than it's worth. This would probably be a smoking deal for a really good radio as long as everything works. Um, Pickup only, no pet, no smoking home. See other listings, lots of electronics for sale. He doesn't have a, a way to see his other listings though. Oh, right here. Okay, let's see what else this guy's got. He's got stereos. Um... Probably moving. He's got uh, ICOM dual bander. Forget which one that is. Some old uh, speakers, fifty bucks. Old Walkman. Fancy clock. Reel to reel. Yeah. I used to have one of these Kenwood type of receivers like that. So that's a good deal, guys. That's a really good deal. Two hundred dollars, Bothell, Washington, right off the four hundred five, probably. Yeah, I miss it out there. I just don't miss all the fucking wacky people in traffic. Uh, we got a nine ninety one A for nine hundred dollars. If we can get him to eight hundred bucks, it'd be a good deal. <coughs> SB one thousand for a thousand dollars. I think that's maybe within the realms of reasonable, I guess. Uh, ALS 600 for too much money. 811 yeah, non H for 650. Yeah, that could be a good deal, I guess. An AL80A, which is going to be SB1000 for 1000, that eh, might be okay. Um, TS440 for 500 with some other stuff and Grant's Pass. It's not particularly a great deal. A 710 for $800. Uh, it's not a great deal. It's used. Ham Radios, HF, Phoenix. $1. Sure. Uh, FT990. Uh, $500, that's probably a good deal for that. But expect to probably be doing some work. Uh, OM2000. I don't know anything about those. Uh, what I've found is that most of the people that get on frequency here have problems with those type of radios. Or, I mean, amplifiers. 
the guy has a 990 for 500 OBO, a TS50 for 350, an Alinko DX70 for 350, a TS440 for 450. So, I don't know what's up with the OM amplifier, but anyway. It could be worth contacting this guy just to see what's up with him. Uh, all of those radios are good radios. So if you could work a deal and get the right price, it would totally be worth it. So, uh, considering I just bought a 7300 and it really was pretty close to $1,200 and change. In fact, it was $1,220 and some change out the door after I bought it brand new this month. I bought one for myself for my birthday because I love the ICOM 7300. I love it, but I hate ICOM's customer service. Okay? If you have to call the assholes in Bellevue, you probably won't want to buy another ICOM radio. I don't know who the guy is that answers the phone there, but I'm not the only one that's encountered him and been treated like crap by him multiple times. They need to fire the idiot. Whoever it is, whoever you are that answers the phone at ICOM and you're a prick, go fuck yourself. Fuck yourself, fuck your mom, fuck your dog, fuck your aunt, fuck your dead grandma, go fuck yourself. You're a piece of shit and you're fucking a disservice to ham radio and you should be ashamed of yourself. You're probably some old fat piece of shit, fucking know-it-all, fucking retard. Been working there for 20 plus fucking years probably. Anyway, so buy an ICOM, be careful with it, make sure you don't break it, because if you have to deal with the prick over there in ICOM, you're going to be having a bad day. So, if you got to pay $1,200 for an ICOM, $875, if you could get the guy down to $800, you're saving $400 and something dollars on this radio. $800 is what I would consider to be a bargain deal on this radio. Anything above that is not a bargain deal, and you really have to want it bad and be impatient. Otherwise, buying it new would probably be wise. You don't know what this guy did with it. Uh, and He's already telling you that he used it to do FT8 digital, and that's hard on these radios. And these radios are not made to do 100% duty. A good question would be, what is the most rugged radio that they are selling that's out now? And I would think that it's probably the 891 Yesu. There is a disclaimer in the new 710 that says, do not talk on it for extended periods of time or otherwise damage will occur to the transmitter. And when I read that, I thought, man, why in the hell did I buy this radio? Now, I don't know what ICOM's stance is on this, but I know a lot of people have burned the finals out on the 7300 doing FT8. And I know certain people have done it over and over again, which means they might have had some other issues. But I think that that's probably an okay price if you can get them to 800 Here we have the 757GX. There's a bunch of these different radios in this time period. 747, 757, 767, and they're all like pretty good radios. They're pretty bulletproof. They usually use the Toshiba 2879s, which is basically the most desirable CB amplifier transistor. And they're capable of well more than 100 watts of transistor. So when you have a radio like this with two of them putting on 100 watts, it's going to run forever. Uh, I don't know what this is. It's some kind of Kenwood. I'm not going to click on it. There's a really ugly blue spray painted van. 50 amp power supply. Uh, the S85, I had one of these. They're nice radios. They sound really good. Um, Tuning strings can be a problem on them. Mine were broken. Kenwood VFL, pretty rare. Uh, what do you got here? Yeah, 
a TS430 for $400, I, th I think that's too much money. Uh, but to the guy that wants it, it might be a good deal. Uh, 9100, I don't know, is this HF, VHF, UHF, new in the box? It's a really hard to find radio. I don't think I would pay two grand for it, but for somebody that really wants this radio, then this might be the one. These are um, from a time period when ICOM made really high quality radios. Um, and sadly, we're just not at that point anymore. He's got a lot of stuff for this radio. You go turn the knobs on a 756 Pro, 746 Pro, or one of these, and you go turn the knobs on any of the new ICOMs, yeah, you notice the difference right away. Spectrum Analyzer. Flex 5000. A National HRO 500. An ICOM 7600 in Redding, California with the matching speaker. It's a really nice radio. I would like to own one of those myself. And if I ever see one for the right price, I will scoop it up. It's got a display like the 7300, but nicer meter on the display. And it's the size of a 756 Pro. The way a radio should be built. The problem with radios nowadays is they've made them very compact. And they're not compact enough to be a mobile radio. But they're kind of small for a home radio. This is a nice radio. You can lay it out, put the speaker next to it, and be good to go. It's like, you know, make lots of contacts, work all kinds of stations. I'm sure the tuner in it is probably really good, just like all the other ICOMs from that time period. There's some vintage stuff. This is Clark selling his... Uh, um, he bought two of these radios and restored both of them. I've heard them on the air. They sound pretty good. Not my cup of tea, but these do like uh, almost 1,000 watts out of the radio. I don't know. It's using some crazy ceramic tube. He sent the cases off to get them powder coated. I don't know how much that costs, but it must have been not cheap. He's got a lot of stuff for sale. You guys have heard me talk about him before on the channel. There's lots of stuff. And although he's kind of a quirky guy, he's very thorough about anything. And you're not going to get some crap from him. So if you see anything on here in this listing and you're in Phoenix and you're interested, you can't go wrong getting it from him as long as the price is comfortable for you. He has a 901, he has a 902, he has the transverter for the 901, he has the speaker for the 901, he has the FL2100Z amplifier that matches the 901, he has the very rare CWRTTY decoder for the 901, he has the 901 band scope, the 902 tuner, uh, a couple of these alpha amplifiers that um, came from John Arthur's that I got my radio from, one of them, and... Uh, John asked me if I wanted to buy them. Clark bought them, and they were both broken, and Clark fixed them. He's got an Alpha 76 CA. Uh, it's a three-tube Peter Dahl. It will do a lot of power. Alpha 374A two-tube. Um, Helicrafters SR2000. Um... Collins S3 line transmitter, receiver, console, speaker, power supply. Uh, anyway, I don't know what the story on that one is, but he also should take the $10 thing off of there. Problem is you can't put the actual price of everything on there. But it's one thing when somebody puts $10, and it's one thing when somebody puts, you know, a list of seven different things and the price of the lowest one, <coughs> where it, it, it's suggestive that it could be the price of the item you want in the picture. Uh, 
the Kenwood 950S Digital. I don't know if that's the same as the SDX, but it's $500, and that's a really nice radio either way. Van Buren. Here's some welders. Wonder why those popped up. A Miller Synchro Wave. This is a pretty big thing, I think. This has to do with ham radio, but uh, uh, trader offer a whole lot. Uh, welcome uh, to meet in Vancouver. What do you have? I'm interested in 3D printers, uh, uh, ham radios, and equipment. Okay, so that's why we saw that. All right. I figured it had to be something like that. A 520 for 375. That's too much money. 720 field with some really weird thing around it. We saw that before. A FT450 for $500. I'd say it's probably a decent price. Um, depending on the condition, because that's not the picture of his radio. And we have a wanted ad here in Havasu. CB guy. Always want something for nothing. It's annoying. FTDX10 in McMinnville, uh, Oregon, I think. I think it's Oregon. Yep. <clears throat> $900. It's a good price for an FTDX10, guys. Really good price. Got some oscilloscopes. Gun parts. Scope parts, car parts, towing crap, license plates, vintage 50s Motorola crap, uh, FCC approved Galaxy CB radios. <clears throat> so basically, they do regular power. Uh, an FT2000, looks like it's got the DMU. Uh, bought this set last so no last November from RW Antenna Store. They were new demo. They come with manual, the microphone, everything that came with them. Uh, I also have uh, other the matching SP8 speaker DMU that I am selling in another ad. <clears throat> I don't know where this is. Is it the 200 watt version? That's the question. I don't think it is. So it's not what I would consider to be something I would want. Maybe if it came with all this stuff. And that's it, guys. So we saw a couple good deals. A couple different things. And you can totally go on Amazon and get yourself a, a brand new radio for four four ninety. dollars um, I believe this one here, we could probably get this at Ham Radio Outlet. For DX Engineering, let me see what we got. And ham radio outlet. Maybe even RNL Electronics. Ham radio outlet's great if you live next to one of them. Otherwise, I recommend not dealing with them. They don't have a very generous return policy at all, <clears throat> and they're not generally going to do anything for you if you have problems. They're kind of like, oh, I saw Sally. Oh, you buy? Oh, oh no. You deal with Amazon. See, Zygu. We got here. Come on. Seven ninety nine is too much money for that. Five forty nine is too much money for that. Three ninety nine for the G ninety. So this is the deal that you would get from them, $399. I would buy it from them. 
I wouldn't buy it from Amazon. Unless you think you might return it, then I would buy it from Amazon. Uh, looks like they have it in most places except for Portland and Plano, Texas and Atlanta, Georgia. So, I have one of these. See the uh, Anderson on the back? Anyway. Yeah, that would be a good deal. Three ninety nine. 20 watts, excellent tuner, sounds like an ICOM 7300, just good radio. Uh, 